Wow, Judy, that didn't cost too much either. That was pretty good. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel like almost reverse because I watched Judy and her passion for Canada. And you're right. Uh, we spend many uh, weekends on a ski hill. Uh, we get rid of the guys and uh, we uh, go up and down the chair and we uh, think about what, what we're going to do to make a big impact. And uh, she's certainly a champion for Canada. And uh, I appreciate everything that you do, Judy. Wow, uh, when Ed called me on this, I was uh, stunned. It is such an honor and a privilege uh, to accept a Peter Lawhead uh, award. I mean, he, he was my uh, role model, I must say. And I also, to be, I'm so humbled to be in the company of Tamara and Jim and uh, Mary Ellen. I mean, to receive an award with you, uh, you three, is, is an incredible honor as well. You know, uh, when I think about leadership, leadership is truly about what kind of impact you make while you're on this earth. And you leave it in a better place than when you started. And, uh, and Premier Lougheed is the epitome of that. And I think Jim uh, described him so well. I wasn't fortunate enough to know him, but I was fortunate enough to follow him. And uh, I remember vividly his words. They stuck with me for a long time. He spoke at the Governor General's leadership conference that I attended in 2008. And it, his words just stuck there. He said, and, and when you talked about him, it reminded me again of it. He said, work hard and be the best prepared person in the room. So I can't imagine being on a board with uh, Premier Lougheed. It would have been really tough. But these words stuck with me because it actually reminded me of a quote that has actually influenced uh, my leadership in my, uh, my career. And that is, chance favors a prepared mind. It's a quote from Louis Pasteur. In other words, you create your own luck. And when you believe in something, you break down every barrier, every obstacle that's put in front of you, determined to achieve it. And I think that was what uh, Premier Lawhe did in his multi-decade uh, reign. He prepared Alberta and Canada uh, for the luck that we have today. And it was through his visionary leadership I, I've, I have watched some of his tapes. It's amazing to watch that uh, leader in action. His thoughtful planning, and the really great thing about him was his ability to collaborate, to collaborate with business and civil society. I wish we had more like him here today, because he really understood that planning and collaboration are absolutely the essential ingredients to good public policy, which in turn delivers the standard of living to its citizens, because that's why uh, we ex uh, exist to lead there. So tonight, just like you, Jim, I, I am truly about honoring this man who we were so fortunate to have as our leader for such a long time. And he navigated Canada's energy sector, was so prominent during his time, he navigated to be one of the top five producers in the world. This is little old Canada that's, you know, 4% of the globe. And he navigated us to be the top five producer in the world. So he was very prominent. And you can say, really, Canada is a lucky country. It's endowed with natural resources. We have a stable democracy. We have open borders. And we sit on the doorstep of the world's largest free market. But it's visionary leadership, like what Premier Lougheed, that really turns all that luck into, uh, it turns all that into luck for us uh, in our country. Because what he did, is he actually really positioned, and I loved your stories because it, I know him from outside and thinking how he th really thought through all of this. He positioned Canada to build this global expertise in energy extraction. He actually attracted more than our fair share of for foreign capital that it really took to develop our resources. But the one big thing that he did that I'm not sure that many people remember now is he had the courage 
and the foresight to set up this technological institution, a Austra. And it's the Alberta Oil Sands uh, Research Technological, uh, uh, I always get it wrong, authority. And that actually unlocked the third largest resource on the planet. And I don't think many people in Canada remember that. That was Premier Lougheed, because it would never have been without him. And what that did, this partnership, again, it's his mindset around partnering, partnering with industry, partnering with academic institutions. And actually, it created decades, decades of wealth for Canadians from coast to coast. And again, it actually supported this standard of living that Canada has become so accustomed to. And what I worry about now is that we don't have this tight integration anymore between government, between our institutions, between uh, uh, business. And I think that we sometimes forget that we really have to work together to create big things, and not in our silos, like we have often, I've seen now, in, uh, in Canada. And, and I worry about this, we're arguing about this tyranny of small issues, little things, arguing polarizing debates about problems, versus really thinking about the greater good, as you described, Jim, about the things that Premier Lougheed did, about collaborating truly on the solutions, having the shared sense of purpose. That is what we need in Canada, because if we don't have that, we risk, we risk being really left behind in this fast-paced, innovative world. So I think that we need to take a cue from Premier Lougheed, and we need to think about how he would prepare how he would, I bet, prepare Canada of, from, uh, from being this continental, and I have to speak from energy, continental energy player, to truly becoming a global energy player, and not just a global energy player. There's a transformation going on, but to become a leader, not only in how we produce energy, but actually how we consume energy as we move through this, potentially in the future, to this low carbon economy. I know that Peter Lougheed would have had that foresight for us to start to prepare the groundwork to get to that low carbon economy and to be a leader, not just in the continent, but to be in, a leader in the globe. So my hope is that we will be bold and you know what we need is we need to be confident. We need to be confident and seize this opportunity that's in front of us to become the most innovative and the most competitive in, to, in the globe, to move from being continental to truly being global players. And public policy is absolutely the essential ingredient. I think it's the foundation, it's the platform for that innovation and leadership. It's why I'm so passionate about public policy, because getting it right to compete in this fast-paced world is truly about rolling up our shirt sleeves and working with others and creating this sense of purpose that Judy uh, talked about here, much like what we did, and I'm just so proud of what we did with Sapora and the other uh, people, uh, great leaders that we had in Alberta, uh, on the industry side and on the environmental side that was so polarized, but we took a step back and we found a shared sense of purpose and we created what I think is probably a leading uh, a climate policy in the globe from Alberta that was truly before so polarized. And it's the ground uh, that we're starting now to work on great things and is unprecedented globally. And that is what we can do as Canadians. And the other thing, I, we haven't got it yet, but it's a fundamental belief of mine that we truly have not embraced enough First Nations values in Canada. And I think that our resource industry can be the catalyst for uh, reconciliation. 
And I hope that in the future that we will not only be competitive globally in energy, in economically, environmentally, but we will create shared value between all of our citizens here in Canada of being a truly global player. That is my hope and uh, why I have such passion, as, again, for public policy, because it is about sharing and cooperating together. And I fundamentally believe that the leadership of today's generation, the people in this room, the leaders across Canada, really need to work together with the shared sense of purpose. We're a small nation, but I believe we're a smart nation, and really prepare the ground for the next generation, just like Premier Lougheed did for my generation. So truly, it is with great humility that I accept this award. And consider it, I consider it as a Canadian, my duty to work with other uh, Canadian leaders to really be the best prepared in this hyper-competitive world that we've got in front of us and to make a better world for the next generation. So truly, I want to thank the Public Policy Forum for selecting a business leader and raising the importance that business leaders have to play in creating good public policy, smart public policy for our future generations. So thank you so much.